Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. Today we're going to take a look at all things sheep. And I have to say, looking at these guys, they have to be the most adorable and most lively young animals that we have seen in Farm Sim to date. These juvenile sheep, they are just, just a deer, if you will, to watch. I can probably sit here all day and watch these little guys either struggle to walk or kind of just prance around and they jump up and down. But before we can get these little boogers to watch all day long, we need to know how to care for them, how to keep them, and basically what we can get out of them as far as an output. If we come here into build mode, we're going to come down to our animals and then we're going to toggle over to sheep. Now we've already talked about these pins because we had a goat video already out if you haven't seen that go ahead and check it i'll put a tick mark up in the upper right corner we have four different sheep pins we have the smallest sheep pin an open sheep pasture it'll hold 19 sheep in its standard configuration and this one will require water as an input because it doesn't have water piped to it all the others which are buildings are automatically watered so you don't have to worry about that. Our second building is $48,000 and it will hold 26 sheep in its standard configuration. Our third building is $51,000 and will hold 26 sheep in its standard configuration. Then our largest barn will hold 68 sheep in its standard configuration and is gonna be $97,000. Now, I said standard configuration because, well, if you're not aware, Farm Sim 25 has what they call dynamic pastures. And dynamic pastures are going to allow us to dynamically replay or redesign, I should say, an animal pen. So let me demonstrate this. I'm putting down the second largest sheep pasture. Default configuration is going to hold 26 sheep. But we're going to left click. And it's going to say, do you want to customize your fence? I'm going to say, yeah, sure. Of course I do. And we're going to now be able to draw out our fence. And just like placing a fence in landscape mode, we're going to extend it out here. And I'm going to bring it all the way out as far as I can to here. And then we're going to come all the way back to about this location. And then we're going to make our way on the edge of the road. And we're gonna come back to our barn. And we know we are good when our fence snaps to the building. Okay, if it's not gonna to snap to the building, well, you're gonna to want to delete the last section with H and then retry. So as you get closer to the end of the pin, it's probably good to you know, put different segments down. That way, if you don't have the ability to snap for any reason, you can H, jump back a segment, and there you go. Once you close it up, it's going to say, do you want to plant meadow in your sheep barn? Well, of course, you're going to say yes. And as a result, well, we now have this nice, large, albeit slightly odd angled here in the corner, but at any rate, nice, large sheep pen. And this guy is going to hold a lot more than the default number of sheep. Let's go over here and check it out. We're going to be able to now hold 63 sheep in this pasture. Versus 26 sheep, which was the default number. So we can get four different breeds of sheep and each breed of sheep we can get in three different age groups. And quite frankly, the only real difference between any of these is going to be their visual appearance. So we have Landrace of Bentham, although that's probably horribly mispronounced. And I really just want to say Bethlehem, but that's clearly probably not right either. Any rate, we can get newborns for $200. But do note, if we buy them here at the animal pen, they're going to cost an additional $30 to be delivered. So really, it's going to be $230 each. We can get our juveniles, which are three months old. They're going to cost $308. 
Kind of an odd exacting number there. But at any rate, they're going to cost $37 for delivery for a total cost of $345 if we buy them here at the pen. We can go with adult sheep at eight months old, and they're going to cost $488, $50 delivery fee, so $538 at the pen. Then we have stein chaff. They are going to have kind of a white body and then dark colored legs and head. Again, same prices, same age groups. We have Swiss Black Brown Mountain. And they're going to have kind of a brown look to them. And then we have Black Welsh Mountain. And they're going to be a little bit darker. Now, sheep overall are going to reach puberty at eight months old. And they're going to start reproducing once they reach puberty. And they're going to reproduce every five months. So your adult sheep are going to reproduce at a one-to-one -one ratio every five months. So be sure you have enough capacity in your animal pen in order to hold those young animals when they do reproduce. Now let's run down to the animal dealer and just talk about picking them up down there and how we could possibly transport, transport our animals from the animal dealer to our pen or vice versa. We are on Riverbend Springs and we're here down at the animal dealer. We could always chat it up with Kate if we wanted to, if we want to learn more about sheep or anything else related to animal husbandry, but I think we're probably good to go for this video. At any rate, what we want to talk about down here is how we transport our sheep. And I've got a Flegel TTW 140 animal transport trailer. And that's what we're going to do to demonstrate this video. But we're going to find that here under our vehicle shop. We're going to go to vehicles. We're going to scroll down to the animals category. And from there, we're going to find the animal transport. We can use, again, the NOAA TTW 140. We're going to be able to transport 13 sheep with this particular trailer. Or we could pick up the Wilson Silver Star. And we're going to be able to transport 38 sheep with this particular trailer at any one point in time. Now this trailer will require either a semi or a fifth wheel dolly if you're gonna use it with a tractor. Once you have your trailer, we're going to pull up to the trigger. We're gonna hit R to pull up our animal dealer menu and we're gonna to toggle over to sheep and goats. And from this point, we're gonna be able to buy our sheep. We're gonna double click on the sheep we want. We're going to come over here, we're going to scroll wheel up to the maximum number of sheep we can get. You can see we're going to get $6,355 worth of sheep. And there are zero fees associated with this because if we buy our sheep here, well, there are no transport costs or delivery fees. Once we do that, we do have our sheep in the building or in the trailer here. And at this point, we could drive them to the farm. But what we also want to talk about is, well, what happens when you are ready to sell your excess sheep? You're going to be able to do that here at the animal dealer. And once again, you're going to bring your sheep to the building. We're going to hit R. This time, we're going to hit this button right here, which is going to say to sell from or unload from. For example, when we get to our animal pin at our barn, we want to unload from and load to. We're going to double click on our sheep. We're going to scroll up and we're going to hit sell. Now do note, we're only going to get $1,560 per sheep as a result of selling them. But you know what? If we are selling our sheep, most likely we have gotten them via reproduction as opposed to really buying them for a premium down here at the dealer. Okay. Now that we have sheep in our pens, we need to talk about how we need to feed them. What do they need for maximum productivity and maximum health? Well, sheep are one of the easiest animals in farm sim in order to keep. We have meadow grass that's going to give them 100% effectiveness, which is absolutely outstanding because meadow grass is just going to grow naturally in their pens. With one little caveat, you want to make sure that you don't have too many sheep in the pen for the size of the area. The fact that I've got 15 sheep in this little area, quite frankly, the fact that I've got 15 sheep in each of these four pens, 
Well, it doesn't bode well for our meadow grass. I don't suspect our meadow grass is going to last the entire summer with all of these hungry guys. But I can tell you over here in this large pen that we put down, the meadow grass in here, well, it should last for a pretty darn good amount of time. And one thing that I really like seeing is that the meadow grass is listed here as 100% effective. If meadow grass isn't enough or in the winter when meadow grass isn't around, we're going to need to supplement feed our sheep. And in order to do that, we're going to either need to provide grass in the form of being loose or baled material or hay. So our sheep will eat grass or hay or meadow grass just out of the meadow. And then that's going to give us 100% effectiveness as well. And then we have our total food capacity. As an output, we're going to get wool from all of our sheep. And in all pens, other than the outdoor pen, we do not have to provide water. We do need to provide water for our outdoor pen. But like I said, they're pretty darn easy to care for. So let's go ahead and talk about what type of machinery well, we might need in order to care for our sheep. So I have here a front loader, a Schaefer self-propelled front loader, as well as a bale spike and pallet forks for the front loader. We're gonna find that here under vehicles and we're gonna scroll up to our loaders section. And this is where we're gonna find our self-propelled front loaders our front loader arm so we can attach to a tractor, assuming it has a front loader attachment point. Our front loader tools, this is where I've got our pallet fork and bail spike. You can get a telehandler, telehandler tools, skid steer or skid steer tools for caring for your sheep. And what you're gonna use this particular device for is gonna to be to feed these guys bales and to collect their wool pallets once they have spawned some wool. So let's just go over here and just kind of demonstrate feeding these guys some hay. We're going to put the bale in the trigger. We're going to take it off the forks and then we are going to pick our bale back up. Now I also wanted to show you over here I think this is a bug in version 1.2.1. .1. That is the version for which we are making this video on. But I had an issue with our goat video in feeding hay from a bale in this particular pen. And we indeed have that same issue here. See, putting it in that trigger area did not cause the bale to go down any. But if we put it over here, for example, well, the bale went down completely. So the other thing you may need with respect to feeding your goats and sheep is going to be a trailer in order to haul loose material around. So we have that over here with our small farm tech trailer. And I've got it already loaded up with a load of hay. And unlike the cow pasture, where we had different triggers for bales and loose material for our open pasture, we do not have that scenario here with our sheep. If we we're gonna feed loose material, well, we're just going to bring our trailer up here to the side of the building. We're going to hit I to unload. And there we go. Visually, we can kind of sneak a peek inside the building here. And we should see the hay plane start to raise up in that feeding trough. And there we go. Now we have fed our sheep in this particular building. Something else that you will likely need is going to be some form of transport in order to transport your pallets of wool. So here I have the International CV truck and it is currently in its flatbed configuration 
So we're going to be able to load our wool pallets onto this because we're going to be able to take our wool over to some productions. And we'll talk about those here in a little bit. But the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and advance one day and see our meadow grass pop up and see how our sheep are doing with respect to producing that wool as well as their overall health. So we can see we already have some wool spawn here. We made a total of 94 liters worth of wool overnight, less than 24 hours because it's only 9.31 in the morning. Now, if we toggle back here to our animal screen, we're going to see our open pasture. We have 100% productivity, 100% effectiveness, and 100% health. We can see that we have consumed down some grass and meadow. That's kind of an interesting thing. And we are, well, we're on our way to reproducing with respect to our older sheep. Our juveniles are effectively 50% their way there to becoming an adult sheep because we picked them up when they were three months old and they are fully grown adults at eight months. Our newborn sheep, well, they are slowly marching their way up to becoming an adulthood at being at 12%. Now, something that is interesting in Farm Sim 25, we have different animal models for their different age groups. Our newborn sheep will appear as newborns until they are three months old, at which time they will then be transported into our juvenile sheep, and they will then appear this size, and then they will adapt and adopt the animations that our juvenile sheep have here. They will stay in their juvenile form until they reach eight months of age, at which time then they will look like adults like we see here. Now let's go and check our other sheep pens. 94 liters of wool. 94 liters of wool. How about this one over here? We didn't feed this pen so I want to see if this one's at 94 liters or if it is less. This one is less at merely 23 liters worth of wool. And as I mentioned earlier, all four pins had 15 sheep in it, five of each age group. So what's going on here? Well, let's toggle over to this particular building. And you can see their productivity is only at 80%. Their total effectiveness of their food capacity well, it is 100%, but they only have 723 liters worth of meadow. Okay, they're eating that down. That's not going to last long. Their health is at 80%, and therefore their wool production has suffered. That is because we went approximately half a day yesterday with no meadow grass. I found with 1.2.1 of the game that the first day we place a pin and we put animals in there, we don't necessarily see or register the meadow grass. It seems like it takes an overnight cycle for that meadow grass to actually then register. So as a result, these sheep have suffered slightly because they didn't have food for a little while. Meanwhile, the other sheep did have food right away. So they have 100% effectiveness, 100% productivity, and 100% health right away so these guys they're going to be a little bit behind all of the other pins as a result because you can see they're at zero percent reproduction they've not reproduced right they haven't moved towards reproducing because their health was suffering same with respect to our little youngins here right they are marching their way but still we're missing out on overall production. Now, speaking of production, our wool pallet will look like this when it is full. Thousand liters is what we will have. 400 kilograms of wool pallet. We're gonna be bringing our wool either to a cell point or to a spinnery in order to then produce fabric. So let's come up here, let's check our prices screen. And, well, let's scroll down here and see what wool is going to be sold for. So, the average easy economy best price is going to be 3,639 liters 
per thousand or 2,194 liters per thousand is the average low point again on easy economy. The farmer's market or the rope maker are going to be able to purchase your wool or spinnery. And then we do have a warehouse where we could buy wool. Don't do it. Never do it because it's not worth it. Now, what can we do with wool? Let's come back here to our production chains. And we talked about the rope factory. So let's pull that up here. We have a rope factory on Riverbend Springs. Rope factory is going to be able to make rope from wool. You see, it's going to take 20 units of wool, make three units of rope at 240 cycles per month. And then we're going to be able to sell our rope. Let's scroll down here and see if we can't find it real fast. We're going to be able to sell rope at an average low price of $15,150 per thousand liters or an average high price of $15,803 per thousand liters. Again, on easy economy and the farmer's market, the train sell point, the playground maker, and the wagon builder are going to be buying our rope. So rope is pretty lucrative, but again... 150 units of, sorry, 20 units of wool is going to make three units of rope. So if my math is right, which it may not be, but if my math is right, that's only 150 units of rope per thousand liters worth of wool. Mm, not necessarily the best ratio, but it may work out monetarily. I'll leave that up to you guys. What else can we do with our rope? Or not a rope, our wool. Well, we can take it to a spinnery. And we have two different spinnery choices. We have a large spinnery building, or we have the small mini spinnery. The large spinnery building is going to take our wool, three units of wool to one unit of fabric. And it's going to have 1,440 cycles per month. The smaller spinnery, well, it's going to be three units of wool to one unit of fabric, but it's only going to do 144 cycles per month. And then I went ahead and put down a tailor shop because, well, we have one more tier of production kind of associated with our sheep. And the fact that we could take that fabric now and take it to a tailor and get it made into some clothing. Four fabrics are going to make two units of clothing and the big building is going to do that in 2400 cycles per month the small building well it's going to take four fabric and make two clothes but it's only going to do that in 240 cycles per month let's jump back here once again to our prices screen and let's take a look at our fabric our fabric has an average high price on easy economy of fifteen thousand four hundred eighty dollars Per thousand liters and nine thousand six hundred thirty one dollars as the average low again on easy economy we can sell our fabric at the farmers market the train sell point the playground maker of course we can take it to the tailor shop or the wagon builder now how about our clothing well clothing looks like it's kind of the ultimate end game here thirty two thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars per thousand liters of clothing $19,937 is the average low, again, on easy economy. And we're going to be able to either sell that at the farmer's market or the train sell point. But is it really the ultimate in game? Because remember, we have a thousand liters of wool. We're going to take nine to three. So that thousand liters of wool is going to be one third. 333 units of fabric is what we're going to get out of that thousand liters of wool if my head math is correct we're then going to take that 333 liters of wool not sorry fabric to the tailor well it's half four to two 
we're going to reduce that down two to one, right? So half. So our thousand liters worth of wool is now about a hundred and seventy liters worth of clothing. And I think it's absolutely insane that I'm talking about clothing in the form of liters because, well, this is farm sim and everything is liters. So we just pretend that's okay. But we'll just say it's 170-ish units of clothing. Well, let's go back here. And, well, 170 units of clothing. So a tenth of this is going to be 3000 $289 for a hundred liters worth of clothing. Our fabric for 300 units is going to be a third of this price. So $5,000 for that 300 and some liters of fabric. Is that right? How about our wool? Well, our wool is easy because it's a thousand liters, 3,639. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if you feel that wool should be sold directly, should it be sold at the spinnery, should it be sold at the tailor, or should it be taken down to the rope maker. So here we have the larger placeable spinnery. Let's go into build mode and see this thing built out. It is going to be right here, $180,000 for that spinnery right there. Well, we know the miniature spin the miniature spinnery is going to be $36,000. $240,000 for the tailor. And we do have a couple different models of the tailor. Right, so we have this tailor shop. And then we have the other tailor shop here with the working buttons $240,000 there as well then we have our small tailor we know that is going to be $36,000 and if our map didn't have a rope maker well we could put a rope maker down here for $300,000 so we've got our inputs and outputs there we have our inputs and outputs here for our miniature spinnery. This is a really cool shed. This is our miniature tailor. And then we have one of our tailors placed here. Working buttons. And then as far as our pallet outputs, our fabric is going to look like this. And we're going to get 1,000 liters worth of fabric on a pallet. Our clothing will come out boxed. And it's going to be 1,000 liters worth of boxed clothing. And then our rope. This is going to be a spool of rope sitting on a pallet. And we're going to get 1,000 liters of rope as well. It says pieces. Well, it's one piece of rope. 1,000 feet. Thousand meters, thousand inches, thousand somethings, but it's one piece. It's not a thousand pieces. It's heavy too. Four hundred kilograms of rope. Dang. So guys, that is pretty much it. Start to finish. Sheep. How do you get them? How do you keep them? And what are they good for? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Are sheep some of your favorite animals to keep on your virtual farm in Farming Simulator 25? What do you think of these animations? Oh my gosh, like I said, I could just watch these guys all day. Just puts a little smile on my face seeing them hop and jump around. Easily, in my opinion, the most lively of juvenile animals that we have seen to date. So we still have videos yet to produce for pigs, chickens, and, well, bees, of course, because bees are an animal here on Farm Sim 25. If you haven't checked out any of my other tips and tricks videos, I do have a playlist. I'm going to leave a tick up in the upper right corner to link over to that. Pretty much everything and anything that is worth knowing in Farm Sim 
is going to be covered at some point in that tips and tricks playlist. I'm slowly marching my way to filling that out, but it's going to take quite a good little long time. So please hit that subscribe button and stay on for the journey. Till next time, happy farming.